Today on Plan Geek Chic, we are going to dig, or maybe just scratch the surface of, a little bit of botanical nomenclature. How do I correctly write a plant's Latin name? This is a question I get a lot, and I see a lot of mistakes online, so let's dig in. Botanical nomenclature is a huge subject matter, so clearly we can't get into all of the fine details today, but we're going to cover the basics so that you can feel confident about how to write and use botanical nomenclature correctly. The point of botanical Latin is to make sure we are all talking and writing about exactly the same plant universally, no matter our spoken language. It's important for you to understand that botanical Latin is not a spoken language. It is a language of identification. It is a written language. So don't worry so much about pronouncing Latin names incorrectly. There's not really any incorrect way to pronounce them, but it is important that you get the name right and that you properly write it in notation whether you are writing a blog post or writing a paper or publishing that plant name in any format. I see so many new plant retailers and enthusiasts and social media influencers, communities and, and groups online using plant nomenclature incorrectly. And that can really muddy the waters when we're trying to make sure we're identifying and talking about the same plant species. Plants are given a binomial species name or binomen that includes a genus and a specific epithet. The species name is always, always written in italics or underlined. Sometimes you can't use italics, but you can use underline. Or if you're handwriting, it can be tough to do in italics. You can underline them. For example, the Latin binomial for coin plant is... Pilea peperomioides, italicized. Pilea, the genus, is capitalized. Peperomioides, the specific epithet, is lowercase, but both are always italicized. Let me repeat that. The genus is always capitalized, and the specific epithet is always lowercase. It used to be that we would capitalize the specific epithet if it was a person's name or location, but convention uh, dictates these days that the specific epithet, even in those cases, is always lowercase. A plant can also have a Latin trinomial name three names that include a subspecies along with the genus and the specific epithet. The subspecies is also written in lowercase and italicized or underlined and noted next to the species name with the non-italicized abbreviation S-U-B-S-P period. A plant can also have a trinomial if it is a naturally occurring variety of a species or a subspecies and the variety name is also written after the genus and specific epithet using the notation or abbreviation VAR period and then the variety written in italics and lowercase. An example would be Cornus Florida variety rubra. Cornus, capital C-O-R-N-U-S, lowercase F-L-O-R-I-D-A, both italicized, variety, V-A-R, period, abbreviated, not italicized, and then the variety name, lowercase, italicized, rubra, R-U-B-R-A, which just happens to be a pink flowering variety of the white-flowered dogwood, Cornus florida. When you're referring generally to multiple different species within the same genus, you can do so simply with the non-italicized abbreviation SPP period. For example, if you are referring generally to the care of a number of different Peperomia species, but you don't want to list each individual Latin binomial, you can simply use the genus, uppercase P, Peperomia, italicized, followed by the unitalicized abbreviation, SPP, period, that's going to denote multiple species. You can also do the same thing if you are referring to one species of Peperomia, but perhaps you don't know what the specific epithet is, but you know it's in the genus Peperomia. Again, Peperomia, 
capital P, italicized, followed by the non-italicized abbreviation SP period. That notes one species. Cultivated hybrid names, as well as cultivated selected varieties, are included after the binomial species name in single quotes or noted with the non-italicized abbreviation CV. The cultivar name is not italicized. For example, Albuca spiralis, a frizzle sizzle. Albuca, capital A, italicized. Spiralis, lowercase s, italicized. Single quote, frizzle sizzle, no italics. But frizzle sizzle is included between two single quotes after the Latin binomial name. You can also get away with just writing the genus name, capital A, italicized, albuca, followed by the cultivar name in single quotes, non-italicized, frizzle sizzle. So albuca, frizzle sizzle. Never use double quotation marks to notate the cultivar or cultivated variety name. I'll repeat myself. <laughs> Never use double quote marks for cultivar or variety names. Only use single quotes. Now, to complicate matters, trade names that are not cultivar names, that are not variety names, are made up after a formal cultivar or variety name has been assigned or registered to a plant, especially if a patent has been filed on that plant. Whatever name is filed on the patent is the official cultivar name, but sometimes breeders like to register plants quickly and then come up with a name to market them later. That name is specifically a trade name only used for marketing purposes. It never should have single quotes around it, but you may see it noted with a trademark or registered mark next to the name. That means that that plant is probably formally registered or has a different official cultivar name. And this can make plant ID in the marketplace pretty confusing. Now, to make things a little more complicated, sometimes a plant that has been patented is also marketed using the formal cultivar name with single quotes. That cultivar name may also be the trade marketing name. So you could also see it with a trademark or registered mark after the official cultivar name in single quotes. Now, understand that if a plant patent has expired, or a plant in the marketplace, a particular cultivar, say, has never been patented and anyone can propagate it and sell it, it's possible for the same cultivar to be sold under multiple different trade names. And boy, can that be confusing. Just remember that technically speaking, the true cultivar name will be noted in single quotes. If there are no single quotes, chances are it's a marketing trade name and you could have to do a little bit of hunting to find the actual cultivar. Now, common names are both easier and trickier. Essentially, common names are the names we make up for plants colloquially so that we can refer to them without knowing the species name. Now, what does that mean? It means that the same species could have many different common names, just depending on where you live. When you're writing plant common names, you don't need to get formal. They don't need to be capitalized. But if it is a proper noun in the common name, you may capitalize it. Sometimes the plant genus also serves as a plant's common name. In these cases, you can simply write the genus lowercase, no italics, when you're using it as a common name. For example, cosmos. The genus of cosmos is also cosmos. And if you're writing the Latin binomial, you would capitalize and italicize the genus cosmos. But when you're using it in the context of the common name, common referral for the plant, you can simply write cosmos, lowercase, no italics. Now, this just scratches the surface of the very large topic of botanical nomenclature. There are many more things that we could discuss, but hopefully this helps you get a better handle on the basics and inspires you with more confidence to write 
plant names correctly and be able to communicate in your communities about plants in a more correct way. If you want to learn more about botany and plant nomenclature, you can always join one of my courses. Come visit me at leslieholick.com.